Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel and a big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for joining us here. Um, so, we're going to get back on this, I don't know the year model, I'm guessing um, a 1986. And I will tell you why I came up with that guess, because I have no way of telling the year model on a spirit outboard. But uh, I went to the Suzuki website, and their parts listing for motors stops. It, it go, it's it's kind of weird. It's broken up from the late 70s. All right, so like 77, 78, 79, then it stops. Then it goes to the mid 80s, like 85, 86, 87, stops. And those are the two-stroke DT series uh, Suzuki outboards. And then, so around 87, it goes away again. And then it comes back in the 90s with the four-stroke, uh, the DF series. So this one's probably around 85, 86, and that's just a guess. If anybody knows how to date them, let me know, because I don't. Um, all right, but before we get into the spirit, I've had some questions, uh, so I'm going to do a little uh, Q&A thing here, just won't take long. Um, the first one is for a Mr. Z Barnes. He's asking me about some of these carburetors. I think he was looking for the bodies. I'll show you what I've got, and these are the only ones I've got. Here they are. Now this is for a V6 but I don't think it matters. Um, I believe they're the same for the V4 series, just two less. So here's a good look at them. I don't know what year model they came off of. All I know is they were off a 150 V6. Um, boy, there is a part number if I can see it. 433562. So you can pause it, do what you need to. Um, I don't know what kind of condition they're on, or they're in, excuse me. But that's what I have. If you think they'll work for you, you might have to put your jets in them. But overall, they look in pretty good shape. So you can pause it, do what you got to do to look at it. If I can help you with those, let me know. Okay. So there you go. Um, the other ones, uh, another question, and boy, this this is a good one because uh, I know I've tried it and experimented it. I can't talk today. <laughs> experimented with it a lot, but uh, M. Ali asked, "Can I take the power pack?" off of something other than a Suzuki outboard and maybe take one off another motor because I'm having trouble finding one for the DT two-stroke Suzuki I have. Could I take one off of a Tahatsu or, you know, Evinrude or whatever? Um, now that's probably something a lot of us have played with. I have things I do know and things I don't know in that that world. I can tell you that I've only had success um, one time doing it and I took a power pack off a, a, a I know it was a late 70s, 78, 79 Nissan outboard and I got it to work on the about the same year Suzuki outboard. I got Spark. And uh, that, that opens up a whole can of worms because um, I will and I can say from experience the Spark on the DT series Suzuki outboards is like no other Spark I've ever seen 
on any other outboards. It will not jump a quarter inch gap. You know, and that ain't that big. I mean, on some of these older models, or even some of the newer models, they'll jump, you know, 7 16 gap with no problem. These Suzuki DTs will not do that. All right. Um, I have a spark checker, the kind that you can dial in. I know you've seen them. Um, and on these DT Suzukis, it's one of these type of spark checkers. So you can dial it in um, from all the way seated, from all the way closed to just barely, you know, a sixteenth of an inch. And then you can go all the way up and it's got a scale there. And you clip this to the block and there it is. Okay, on these DT series Suzuki's, they will barely jump a sixteenth of an inch. And I've even had to put a towel over this window and stuff and turn it over with my half Milwaukee in order um, to make sure it was not a no spark situation. And they will run fine like that. I, I've just done it too many times to have anybody tell me different. I've done it over and over again. So now when I get one of these DT series Suzuki's in here, and I check the spark, I don't even bother with the other spark checkers. I get this one, I turn it until it's just barely open, not even a sixteenth of an inch. And then I spin it over so that it spins hard and strong with my Milwaukee half inch drill. And if I don't have spark doing that with it barely open, then I'll go, okay, I probably got a no spark situation. But I've done it and I've had it happen to me too many times um, to believe any different. The Suzuki DT series electric system, electronic system that they have is different than any outboard that I've come across. The, the spark is, I ain't gonna say it's weak because the motors run fine on it, but the average person I think that might come across one of these might think they're not getting spark. And I'm telling you, get one of these and, and just barely open it and recheck it and you might see a faint spark there and the things will, they will run fine on that. Um, so now getting back to what I know and what I don't know um, for Mr. M. Ali. The only success I've had in swapping those around like that is in that one case Nissan to Suzuki. They were both the older blue ones uh, with the white bonnets and stuff. The, the, the power packs did look different, but it worked. I got the motor running and I sold the motor. Um, now, what I do know, because you had asked about the, the coils as well. No, I, I've had very little luck with doing that. I have tried on many instances. What I do know is that the newer, and when I say newer, I'm talking newer or l the latest models of OMC coils, the ones that are completely plastic um, with the exception of the little brass for the spark plug and the coil wire where they snap on. That style of black coil, you cannot use it on the older style CDI units that have the metal coil with the plastic center. They're typically green, all right? I, I've had many come in here and people tell me they lost spark on a cylinder or whatever and they swapped the coils and they bought a brand new one. And it'll be one of the new OMC black ones for the 90s on up, uh, 80s, late 80s on up OMCs. They will not work um, for the the older style that are CDI units, just like I had on that little six horsepower Johnson, that style CDI, you cannot replace that with the all black ones and get spark. Been there, done that, it won't work. Um, if somebody can make that work, I would love to see it and know how they did it because I've tried it and um, I, I have to say it's a no-go. I, I could not get it to work. Uh, okay. 
here's a visual reference. If you take this style, all plastic, and try and replace this style. This is rusty and yucky, but it'll let you see what, what you need to see. The metal here with the plastic, and then there's even the older style. This style, and I've tried it on several motors, it will not work. This is different than this one. So if you're going to buy a bad coil, you know, you've got a coil that you know is bad, it's this style, don't get this one because it won't work. Um, now, that being said, I have not tried it to where I, I changed out the complete mag plate with the charge coil and the trigger and all, all the way down to the coils. I believe, and I've thought about it a lot, I believe that would work. I believe you could probably be successful uh, doing that. If, in other words, you took the system that was on that little six horse Johnson that I just had in here in my last couple of videos, if you took that from the mag plate all the way to the coils, you would probably be successful. But if you're just changing out the coils, it won't work. That i found. Again, if somebody has come across something different and had success, please share it with us. We would all love to, uh, it would help us all. So please do it. So, um, one more and then we'll get on this spirit. Um, oh, actually two more. Uh, I have to agree, a comment was left on that little six Johnson and after you know, evaluating and looking over it, I agree with a Mr. D. Kimbler. He stated that that thing was probably, uh, it had the, the, the fact that it was so carboned up and filed up was probably not from the thermostat at all, um, but somebody used it for trolling for many, many, many hours. And, and I, after thinking about it and looking at it, he's correct on that, I, I believe. I believe that's what caused it. Um, because the, the thermostat lended credence to that. Yeah, the thermostat um, was not frozen in the open position, making the motor run cold all the time, as I, I had stated. Um, and then after going, yeah, you know, that, that thermostat was, you know, appeared like it was in the closed position, and, which would have made the motor run hot. So the thermostat was probably as gummed up as it was, it was probably working. And what most likely caused that was somebody just spent a lot of time with that motor trolling at very low RPMs where not all the oil burns up um, and the engines never get run up good and high and blow it all out. I tend to agree with that. So that was a good comment there. And then one more. Um, I think it was a C. McCarthy that, that, that uh, he had asked, had I ever had these uh, Kodiak brown bears come snooping around here, maybe while I was in the shop, you know, come up and uh, stick their snout in here and sniff around? Um, no, I haven't ever had one actually come into the shop or anything. I have had them in my yard. I have a berry patch over here, and I got off really uh, in the, the wee hours of the night one night coming home, and when I parked my car, I had about a 600-pound sow, for the most part, sleeping. I guess she had had her fill in my berry patch, and she was just laying there in the berries <laughs> asleep, or taking a nap, I would say. And I didn't even notice her at first when I pulled up, and then I opened my car, my truck door, my Danger Ranger, and I was pulling some stuff out of the truck. I was clunking around, and... When I shut the door and turned, I saw her raise her head, and uh, and I was like, "Oh, hello!" And uh, so then she just stood up and just sauntered across the street and up the Perezway dirt road across the the way. And I watched her walk up up that way. And now, have I had them come in my shop? No, but uh, I often, in fact, about two weeks ago. You can see that car right there. I had footprints in the snow right there in between this door and that car. 
of a good sized bear, I would say um, at least nine, in between nine and ten feet, and you can estimate that by measuring across the paw pad and add an inch. And so I gave that a quick measurement, so it was a good nine plus bear. Um, and that's not uncommon because I have a smoker right here that I smoke meats and mostly fish in. And this time of year, when there's no fish in the river, they'll go around and go to dumpsters, people leave out dog food and garbage or whatever, and, the, and smokers, they'll go and sniff around smokers. I've actually had paw prints on my smoker. Um, so they come, they're around here and they do come, but uh, I've only actually seen a couple around the yard here, the one that was in the berry bushes, and then I see the signs of them. I've had bear scat in my backyard, um, but they're, they're, they're not nocturnal, but they move a little slower and a little later and earlier in the, in the winter months. Um, they don't truly hibernate here on Kodiak. Some do, but not all. Um, especially the town bears, the ones that have become acclimated to uh, garbage, dog food that were raised in, in and around the houses and stuff. Um, they nap and they sleep, but they don't particularly truly hibernate. Um, as, as many of the bears that live further out, they actually do hibernate. Um, but they'll get up and walk around when it warms up and gets really rainy around here, which we've had a lot of this year. Um, not a lot of snow this year, thank goodness, but m more rain than snow. And so there's the Q&A. I hope I got to a lot of those questions. And uh, so I think it's time we get on that spirit outboard. Let's do it. Yummy. And you wonder why the bears come sniffing around. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and try and give this Suzuki a cold start. I wish those clamps were. Um, okay, so. How in the world? Yeah, even that's still got stiff already. Let me get her going. Let's get a little tri flow on that. I gotta get a knob for this. But, but we'll see if I can get it to at least start. Now this, this throttle system is not good. Um, as in, don't work at all. Now, so, yeah, that'd be up. Boy. So I'm gonna have to come up with something. So if I push the choke, it won't open. Not good. Okay. So, I know I'm going to have to have choke. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to catch quick enough. I'm going to idle it up a little bit with the idle screw. Just to help me get it started. So, how's that work? Yeah. That's all nice and free. That should probably be good. I can always idle it more. Let's see. What Switch is just a an affair.
Well, here, stop that. Uh, let me uh, squirt some dry fluid down in there. She's been sitting for a few months since I uh, got her running. I need to get one of those clamps working, but boy, they're as tight as they can be. Tight! Tight! Yes. Poor, abused little spirit. Now what's going on with this thing? the tri flow burning let me eye it up a little more she definitely popped that time you a little more tri flow Hard, maybe I'll plug up again. See if I can. I'll put it on about a, a little over half choke, maybe. I can't believe that carb's plugged up again already. I guess it is. Hmm. So I'm going to do the old needle thing where I pull out the needle and blow some compressed air in it. I'll be right back. Okay, I unscrewed this low circuit deal. From right in there and uh, I'm going to take a little of regular old can card cleaner and shoot in there my needle just went flying it was in my can okay well I'm gonna open it wide open put that in there and Then I'm going to take my needle gun, air gun, and stick it in there. It works sometimes, sometimes it don't. Sometimes, sometimes it don't. So, I think we'll give it another shot. Oh, put the needle in first. Something's going on with this recoil, too. I don't know what that is. Screw it all the way in. I counted them before I took it out, and I had it set at one and a half from a light seed. I'm gonna go ahead. And there's a half and one, a half and two. Why not? Might help a little bit of fuel get in there. Never know. Never know. So let's try it. All right. So I got it on about half choke. Use that bow.
it really does kind of amaze me um, how Suzuki in general, especially Suzuki, really copied the early or there I'm having trouble with my tongue how they uh, the early Suzuki's really copied OMC um, just like this little gear shift cover you know in the in the 60s 70s 80s and I can get that with these gloves I can't do it captain I can't um, I can't even do it with a screwdriver hard. Because I want my washer. My washer. Washer? Washer? Tater totter. Yeah, they copied a lot <laughs> on their early ones. So did. Yeah, they nice stainless studs. Hey, wait a minute. I got had a gasket too. Uh oh. Uh-oh, I'm not going to be able to I see some goo on this gasket. I'll probably have to cut a new one. Maybe not. Let's see. Let me get a razor knife. You know, you know. A gangster blade. A gangster blade. I think it just fell out of there. Old hard geese. I'd like to save this gas and reuse it because it's just a, you know, it's just a, well, a gasket. It's not, it's more of a sound gasket. Because there's water goes down through there. We saw that coming out of there. You know. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Oh, looky there. Just like OMC. Pretty amazing. The only difference is, instead of a 3 8, it's 10 millimeter. So I got to come over here to my succums. I think that's a 10 millimeter. And get me the 10 millimeter. Yeah. So, check out. See? It's 10 millimeter. But yeah, it's, I mean, basically, you could take, heck, they probably are the same one. Um, I was going to say, you could take this gear shift connector and use it on an OMC. And the Suzuki's are pretty much the same. Okay, now I'm guessing them look like about 12s. Them look like about 12s. So, over to my 12s I come. And I'm going to try and initially break these with my little quarter inch because I don't know how salty this thing is. Now, I wonder what they got running between this short shaft, long shaft deal. What do you think? Are them 14? No, they're 12. Ooh, that wasn't bad. I hope they all like this. Oh, yeah. Not bad. Maybe this old spirit ain't, a, ain't as old and neglected as I thought. Oh, wait a minute. Did I speak too soon? No. Okay, let me get these. I don't think you need to sit here and wash me. Take out four 12 millimeter bolts, you know what I mean? Okay. I'll be back. Okay, so we popped that lower off of there. Um, and again, look at the similarities to, say, an OMC 18 horse. And they did make little improvements along the way, I think. Like if you look at what holds the water pump housing on, um, it's, it's nuts and washers. Oops. 
instead of bolts or screws. And of course I just dropped that bolt, that nut. Try not to do the same again. Because I've had some of these old salty OMCs where I couldn't get the, uh, I had to drill out the screws. So I think a nut is an improvement to that. But, again, wouldn't surprise me if you couldn't fit an OMC. Yeah. Off with the gloves to get them little teeny washers. And this thing, like I said, it was pumping well, but I don't know, I, well, I do know, this, this water pump's ancient, or this impeller is ancient. In there, three nuts and washers, and I'll gently pry up on this. Oh yeah, it's coming right up. Now on the Suzuki, I'm not sure does the whole sh well that's I think that tube should, you know, come apart. It's real salty right there. I'm just gonna clean it up and leave it as it is, because I see no reason. Now if you look in the inside, this thing is it does have a stainless liner, it looks like, in there, instead of just a plain old pitted aluminum. Um, heck, this, you know, this, this housing could be brass, just some kind of, let me scribe it a little bit. See if, I have seen Suzuki's do such things. Um, this, no, it doesn't appear to be brass. But, so, but the inside of it's real nice. So there's that. And here's our impeller. Oh, that's kind of different. So, um, this one's probably getting along, a little bit long, because I've done a lot of yakking. And, um, so... I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up here, and if you can, get a young person in that boat, let them drive, and take them fishing, as always. That's one more not so much of a hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Out Boards with your host, Cody Bass.